on this week's show, Nissan Leaf milestones in the US, expanded US availability for Kia's Soul EV, and fossil fuel loving Jeremy Clarkson gets his marching orders from Auntie. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube? Want to read the articles we're referencing as we go? You'll be pleased to know we've embedded clickable links through to each and every story. Just click on the headline in each story in your favourite browser and it will take you right to our site where you can read the story in full. Watching elsewhere? You'll find the links to each story in our show notes for today's show at www.transportevolved.com. It's Friday, March the 27th, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and I'm practising my Power! You know, just in case the BBC calls. Nissan's all-electric Leaf, which has been on sale around the world now for nearly four and a half years, may have sold more than 165,000 vehicles globally. But last weekend, Nissan North America celebrated selling its 75,000th Leaf to a US customer. The car, a sleek black 2015 lease FV, was purchased by software engineer, keen runner and Portland, Oregon local Rishab Mahandru, who said that the Leaf's all-electric zero emissions range perfectly suited his daily 30-mile commute. It's worth noting that Mahandru, like many other Leaf owners today, is now on his second electric car, having traded in his 2013 Leaf for the new one when his lease was up. Having spent two years already driving an EV, he said his decision to trade his old leaf in for a new leaf on a two-year lease was a no-brainer. We hope he and his family enjoy the new shiny ride. Ever since it entered into production in 2013, the BMW i3 electric car and its twin, the BMW i3 Rex range extended electric car, have enjoyed strong sales across Europe and US, amassing more than 20,000 global sales to date. But according to BMW Group CEO Norbert Reithhofer, more support from worldwide governments is needed to ensure that sales of the BMW i3 and i8, along with other electric vehicles from other automakers, continue to rise. Talking at BMW's annual press conference last week, Reithhofer compared sales of BMW's plug-in vehicles in key markets like Norway and California, where generous plug-in car incentives have resulted in strong sales for the company, with its own domestic market in Germany, where a lack of incentives have meant BMW i3 sales have been pitiful. Referring to a recent failed attempt by German Chancellor Angela Merkel to introduce tax credits for companies plugging into EVs, Reithhofer said that German car makers had delivered their part of the bargain to make plug-in vehicles and called on the German government and other less supportive governments around the world to get their act together. We'll be interested to see if his plea is listened to. After enjoying continued success in California, South Korean automaker Kia has announced that its Kia Soul EV will be available in five new US states. The five-seat CUV, based on Kia's already popular Kia Soul, comes with an 81.4 kilowatt electric motor, a 6.6 kilowatt onboard charger, and CHAdeMO DC quick charge capability. Range is an EPA-approved 93 miles on the combined test cycle from its 27 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack. Starting next month, the Kia Soul EV will first go on sale in Georgia, where generous plug-in incentives and enthusiastic EV support should make it fly off dealer lots. Then Kia will roll out sales in Washington State, Oregon, Texas and Hawaii before the end of June. So, if you're interested in an urban runabout that has style to boot and zero emissions and you live in one of the five states, you should give the hamster's favourite ride a try. Late last year, as part of its continued quest to one day dominate the plug-in and electric vehicle marketplace, Volkswagen made a 5% acquisition of US technology company QuantumScape Corporation, a firm founded in 2010 by several Stanford University alumni to develop and market a solid-state battery. This week, Volkswagen boss Martin Winterkorn said the German automaker is impressed with the solid-state battery technology and will be deciding by July this year if it will use the advanced battery tech in its next generation of plug-in vehicles. Unlike traditional electric car battery packs, solid-state batteries use both solid electrodes and solid electrolytes, making them incredibly durable and fireproof. They're also far more energy dense and power dense than conventional technologies, meaning Volkswagen and its subsidiaries, including Audi, Bentley, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Porsche and Seat, could all benefit from battery technology capable of providing in excess of 400 miles of range from a single charge. 
But as anyone who's worked on academic circles will tell you, there's a great deal of difference between laboratory tests and commercialization. So it's tough to tell which way Volkswagen will go right now. If it does opt for solid state, however, it could end up with a major head start on competitors, including market leader Tesla. This is certainly one to watch. Thanks to new legislation being brought into force in 2018, all of London's iconic black cabs, or rather all the new ones, will soon be required by law to be capable of driving at least 40 miles per day in all electric or zero emission mode. It's all part of a plan by London Mayor Boris Johnson to improve air quality in England's capital city, a plan which includes banning older diesel vehicles from London streets completely. But as you reported this week, the Licensed Taxi Drivers Association of London, which represents over half of cabbies in the Greater London area, is calling on the Greater London Assembly to install 500 dedicated rapid charging stations reserved exclusively for licensed cab use, so that cabbies aren't left queuing for charging rather than picking up fares. In addition, the organisation says the GLA should offer additional incentives cabbies in the form of plug-in car grants to help them afford the higher purchase cost of a plug-in hybrid taxi cab over traditional diesel powered ones. But with no word from the GLA on demands, we'll have to wait and see if the LTDA gets what it wants or not. It's official. After years of ridiculing plug-in green and future car technology, saying it would never catch on, Jeremy Clarkson, the star of internationally famous BBC Top Gear, has been fired. Clarkson, who has made a name for himself as being politically incorrect as possible, managing to offend pretty much every minority and even a few countries along the way, was fired midweek after punching a Top Gear producer a few weeks ago because he didn't have any warm food on tap for Clarkson after a busy day of shooting. The incident, which we're sure you've all heard of already, has resulted in the last two episodes of the season of Top Gear being removed from scheduling and Mr Clarkson's contract being revoked forthwith. Over the years, Clarkson and his cohorts James May and Richard Hammonds have really stuck the knife in about EVs in general. Although, as we've noticed last year, Mr May now owns a BMW i3 because he actually enjoys the fun of a talky electric motor. So, while there's maybe hope for the other two, Hammond being an open Tesla Model S fan, we suspect it's time to put the dinosaur Clarkson out to pasture, just like those engines he's so fond of. And finally, think back to last summer and you may remember news of a High Court injunction taken out in the UK by utility company and charging provider Ecotricity against a certain Californian automaker by the name of Tesla Motors, surrounding rapid charging provision in the UK. The court case, initiated after Ecotricity claimed Tesla was carrying out a smash and grab raid on UK charging sites with its own intellectual property, has been going on ever since, with Tesla counter suing Ecotricity for anti-competitive practice. Well, this week, the case was given an interim hearing at the UK High Court, with both Ecotricity and Tesla requested by the judge to provide additional information to assist a fair trial. Ecotricity must provide financial records, strategy documents and modelling to support its claims by April 22nd, and in return, Tesla has to provide documentary evidence of internal meetings and discussions about setting up its own charging network in the UK. Since both firms have been trading blows in carefully worded statements, but from where we're standing, we just want both firms to get along and be nice to each other. Because without cooperation, Tesla owners or other car electric owners in the UK will stand to lose out. And that could hurt more than just each company's bottom line. It could hurt plug-in sales across the UK too. Here's hoping there's a happy and successful resolution coming just around the corner. Well, that's all the Transport Evolved Monkeys could type for today, so we're done. You can catch us next week at the same time for another weekly news roundup, or visit our news site every day at transportevolved.com for all the latest news. You'll notice there won't be a live panel show this weekend due to pending medical stuff, but do check out our YouTube channel and watch some of our other shows instead. As usual, there's been a whole lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including how Nissan is fighting electric car myths with reliable battery packs, how Honda is giving fit EV owners another two years of optional lease for their compliance cars, the US state of Illinois suspends the alternative fuel rebate program with immediate effect, and Mercedes-Benz jumps on the plug-in hybrid SUV bandwagon. So when we're done, click this link and head to our site to catch up. 
that's all there is to say. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, keep evolving.